The rise and the fall of a crypto Ponzi scheme. Unveiling the complete history of Hyperverse by Danny DeHeck, aka the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger. You may have heard that Sam Lee is trying to start up Hyperverse again. Next week, he's going to announce a miracle cure for one of the most successful Ponzi schemes that I've ever seen on the internet. I'm going to expose him. I'm going to give you a complete breakdown of his history, his historical timeline that goes right back to, I think, 2015. I'm going to show evidence that Sam Lee stole over $50 million from Australian investors and went into hiding. I'm going to fully expose this guy. I've put together a comprehensive video and I'm going to share it with you. So let's get into it. This is the video. I will talk along the way. There will also be timestamps so that you can go to the part that you want to. Underneath this video, there will be a description and there's a little wee tiny word called more. If you click on that, you'll see the timestamps and we'll get started straight away. So it's pretty obvious this is Blockchain Global, the team at Blockchain Global, and this is Sam Lee, the center of screen. This is in Melbourne, and I believe it is a shared office space where Blockchain Global used to be based. Well, blockchain is the buzzword and uh, there's so many adults that don't understand anything about it. And it's, uh, I guess, really funny. Um, apply that into blockchain, layer on some smart contracts and some blockchain sexiness, and you have an explosion of allowing any country. People really need to understand that blockchain is supported globally by all governments. Um, uh, cryptocurrencies, however, is uh, very new, and uh, we see a lot of people making investments into something that they have very limited knowledge of. And therefore, it is a government's job to make sure that the citizens they, they govern are warned sufficiently to do their research before making an investment. So this is the business partner at the time. Now if you're not familiar with it, Sam actually had a company, a proper company called Blockchain Global, and they tried three times to get this company listed on the Australian share market. The guy that we're about to have a quick look at is actually used to be the CEO of that company. And then later on, Sam um, was the CEO of that company. So you may be familiar with the three people there. We've got Alan, and then we've got Sam in the middle. And we've also got Ryan Jew. Now, Ryan Jew is also meant to be another billionaire going by what everyone says. And he was also looking after 300 companies or 300 um, I don't know, enterprises. And this is them going way back. Now, I am going to stop here because I want to show you something really interesting. This is my YouTube channel. Please do like and subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. It helps the video. If you go all the way down to the bottom of my video... Uh, my videos, you'll find a video that I did ages ago, and it's called the Historical Hypertech Group Historical Timeline. So you can literally go to Google and just search for that. You'll see the video pop up. But in here, Vinny from Project Frugal, which I'll show you his channel over here, did 10 videos of the complete historical timeline of Sam's existence. So if you are really thinking about getting involved in Hyperverse, if Stam, Sam, Scam Lee starts selling memberships like they used to, I want you to really spend some time and just understand the person that you're getting in bed with. Do you really want to be associated with him? Uh, and do believe me, this is a Ponzi scheme. They don't actually have any product or service. However, if you go to this picture here, this was, um, <laughs> this is actually, oh my God, we'll 
Pixel um, did a video when I went out one day. But I just want to go back to at the beginning. In 2014, they set up a company called Bitcoin Group. So that photo is them all together with this company called Bitcoin Group. And then in 2015, they started up Colin Star Capital. And that's what Ryan Jew's company was. And then they become a shareholder. I think it was a 40% shareholder in Blockchain Global, which was Sam's company. And then Bitcoin Group closed. Uh, and they tried to do a fundraising campaign of about $20 million and failed. They actually managed to raise $2.9 million. And when we looked at the information sheet of what they were trying to accomplish, most of the money they were trying to raise was actually just paying direct to the salaries. It was quite breathtaking. Uh, obviously, that's why they wanted $20 million. But the $2.9 million that they did raise was um, basically well short of the money that they were uh, needing. Okay, then they re branded block sorry bitcoin group rebranded themselves to blockchain global and in 2017 um, blockchain global enters into a binding agreement with a company called digital x and we believe that digital x australian company should be investigated because we believe they still have dealings with them all now just uh, saying and then this is where digital x actually took a 40 percent stake in um you know what was happening so i'm going to make a stuff up if i read this all and it's pretty boring but go look at that if you want to know the whole timeline of everything go to that part and then this will make this video a bit more ex um, explain itself these guys are not billionaires they are wannabe billionaires and if you go to um, fin um sorry vinny uh, vinny's channel here called project frugal you can see a complete timeline of all the stuff I've just talked about. Vinny actually gave me that uh, historical timeline. It's breathtaking when you read it, but you see these companies, how they start and how they exist. Anyway, let's get into it. Most of this will explain what I've just done and I'll be doubling up. Electricity cost is the most uh, like cost of our business. This mining site costs like 10,000 Australian dollars electricity price per day. We choose Condensate because of the cheaper electricity and the many hydro plant projects. We've already tried Washington State, Iceland and Indo Mongolia, then we come here. Many people think Bitcoin is a virtual currency. Virtual means doesn't exist, but actually to me it's quite real because we need to buy the, big, buy the, the supercomputer, we need to burn electricity and to generate a, a Bitcoin. And it's very difficult to, to, to get one. On the our Bitcoin mining site, there is a, a real gold mine, mining factory here. Yeah. So we mine digital gold, they mine the real gold. The, the same thing. So since then, they had to move out of China because China basically kicked out all the crypto mining companies. And that's what Ryan Zhu's strength was, was crypto mining. And obviously it costs a lot of money to run the mining, especially with the fall of crypto. Uh, it's hard to fathom how companies actually keep mining for Bitcoin and it gets more expensive, it needs more energy and that's why Sam Lee at the moment is telling you with his We Are All Satoshi, he believes that the last Bitcoin is going to be mined in 2050. But what he's doing at the moment, he believes he can buy discounted um, Bitcoin from some wholesaler, which is ridiculous when you can just buy it on the open market. Anyway, he's buying discounted Bitcoin and he's putting it in what they call the Vault Horizon. And he believes that um, Bitcoin will go from $30,000 back up or over to $100,000 per Bitcoin over the next 500 days. And that's why his new Ponzi scheme, scheme is such a joke because we are Satoshi. Every time somebody invests, 30% of the money goes into a vault that Sam Lee controls. Now, if you look and you wait and see Sam Lee's history, there's no way in hell You'd want to trust you, Sam. <laughs> Just saying, and I'll show you why. So, Jaden Weave, if you don't know him, he actually was the CEO of Hyperverse. And then he resigned, and then that's when Stephen Reese Lewis came along. So, I still believe that he is working with Ryan Jew. And Ryan Jew is responsible of rebranding of Hyperverse to Hypernation. And they tried to set up Hypernation as a completely separate entity. Now, Jaden Wee and Ryan Ju seem to be running um, what was Hyper Nation. And at that time when they launched that, that's when Sam Lee came out of hiding and started up Stable Deo. And then 
he started getting involved in all the Zoom meetings and in the communities, and he is telling people that he would help them get their money back from Hyperverse if they signed up and gave everyone your passport, your driver's license, your home address, your first name, your last name, your phone number, all your personal details were to be given to Sam Lee, and then he was going to use that to go into bat and try to get the money out of Hyperverse. Now, Kalpesh Patel told me that he left Hyperverse because Sam Lee told him that they were taking the money out of HVT and transferring it into Bitcoin wallets, or into Bitcoin, or into smaller wallets. And we've tracked the transaction number that we had for $842 million, and it got broken into small lots of crypto, which is amazing. Now, if you go through my videos, you'll find that address. You can do your own investigation on that. The next shocking thing he told Kalpesh Patel that they weren't doing any whale trading. This is what they told the nodes. So they were trying to manipulate and, and uh, with their money that they had from Hyperverse to, you know, obviously buy and sell crypto at the right time. And the other thing they, they told the nodes that they were going to invest in um, startups. And this didn't happen. So Kalpesh Patel felt that this was not ethical. And he, at that time, resigned from Hyperverse. And then that's when Keith Williams come into play. And uh, I believe, well, he became the, the global sales representative for Hyperverse, and um, and it just gets worse and worse. So all this here was all about a slow exit strategy. So they've come up with this great idea telling everyone that we're going to help you get your initial investment back. That is a total crock, a total waste of time. Do not believe these, um, they're not going to give you your one times, because I've literally seen a transaction going out of at the same time it crashed, it was this massive transaction of $842 million. Now, this is meant to be well over a $4 billion Ponzi scheme, um, and it just doesn't make sense that uh, there's any money left. The money is long gone. So let's carry on, and let's learn about Jaden Wee. So, so my name is Jaden, and uh, um, I get into blockchain industry back to 2013 in Australia. I, I met my partner, Ryan Zhu, okay. and uh, I will inform community in advance, just in case you worry about you cannot withdraw or something like that. I don't want that to happen. Well, it happened. Well, after months of delay, Bitcoin finally closed its IPO in preparation for listing. The Melbourne-based company is the first cryptocurrency miner in the world to offer shares through an initial public offering, which opened on December 24. It is offering investors 100 million shares at 20 cents each to raise $20 million in that IPO. And the company has revised its prospectus three times on orders from the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. Right, so this is the article that I'm about to show you, but I'm going to go real time here because it's been updated. So if you go through here and you, you scroll through blockchain global falls, uh, confirms hyperverse, oh, I can't even read properly, I don't know what I'm trying, uh, I've been dyslexic sometimes, but here the first thing is the liquidators were looking for $21 million that was taken out. So that, they listed on the Australian share market, they raised $50 million dollars, and then the next thing is uh, all the money had um, disappeared. And if you read all those articles about it, allegedly there was a laptop that had the keys to the crypto and that got stolen. And that's what they said. But on the 8th of December 2021, they, they re-estimated that it was actually 21, sorry, 49, sorry, 48.9 million. Big numbers to read. And there was uh, a quote down here where I think if I can find it in a hurry, I was going to get that red. No, not that one. It must be this one here. Um, blockchain Global. Um, so whatever that figure... Yeah, so here's the investigation, the updated investigation words. The investigation into Blockchain Global is ongoing. However, Supreme Court proceedings strongly suggests $48.9 million in losses is extremely conservative. Right, so this happened uh, back in 2021. Ryan Drew and Sam Lee just appeared, and everyone seems to be, uh, well, we know that Sam seems to be in Dubai. Ryan Drew, I've got some videos in my sh on my shorts of where Ryan Drew is living, but everyone's looking for them and no one can find them. So if Sam Lee does have any money, he's definitely not a billionaire because billionaires don't need to steal from uh, Australians <laughs> and also if he does have any money he's at the most he's going to have 50 million dollars and if there's 
two of them involve Ryan Jew and him, that's 25 million each. And I'm pretty sure that these crypto guys would have invested that money in crypto. Now, I had a mate that had 5 million in crypto and he lost 3 million within a few days because of the drop. So I'm assuming that these guys would hide all their money in crypto. And this is why they're trying to push crypto to go back up because they know that they've got so many cryptos. And if, they're, if they, the bottom falls out of the market, they've obviously lost millions of dollars as well. So my point is, I don't believe Sam's a billionaire for a millisecond. And he's just bullshitting you all. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Now, this is on um, Oz's website. And we email every now and again. It's a brilliant website. If you want to find anything about any Ponzi schemes, go to behindmlm.com. I believe anything that has crypto and multi-level marketing is a scam. And I've never been proven otherwise. Just because you get money out of a Ponzi scheme at the start or for maybe for a few months, uh, it doesn't mean it's a legitimate business. None of these businesses have proper premises. However, Blockchain Global is the closest we've ever seen anyone um, get to that point. So let's carry on. Hypertech. All right, I'm just going to turn the sand, sound in here and um, I don't... So Hypertech Group was actually um, Sam... Um, sorry, Sam Lees, and no, actually, I got that wrong. Hypertech Group was actually, I think it must have been Sam Lee and Ryan Jews. They were in business together. Hcash um, was the cryptocurrency. I'm actually not explaining this, and it's not really relevant. It's not going to make any difference if I don't get this quite right, even though I have done this video three times in the past. Um, but they do, in this video, talk about where they think that company is going. And um, Focus will be using blockchain technology. So it's all blockchain, and a lot of it is the same as religion. They promise a paradise of wealth and all Time sorts of things. had a record-breaking year in 2021. Scammers stole a whopping $14 billion last year. A very warm welcome to our distinguished guests. So this was the uh, opening presentation of Hyperverse and I remember sitting up late one night trying to record it because it was very hard to get the recording. So have a listen to this and um, you know highly staged and green screened all this sort of stuff. A real production studio here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today in this spectacular online event. His contributions to the blockchain sector has been very impactful and very inspirational. So here without further ado, let's welcome Sam. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. I am the CEO and founder of Blockchain Global and chairman of the Hypertech Group. So, uh, so there you go, Hypertech Group, here's the chairman, so that means it was Ryan Jew's baby. In 2010, when I first discovered Bitcoin, it was a bunch of geeks and hackers who have yet to realize what the potential of blockchain can be. And through Bitcoin, we realized that all right, so that's just a snippet of Sam doing a presentation. All these videos are on my YouTube channel. So this one here was a real laugh. So um, Hope Hill was their chief financial officer, and she was on that very video that you just watched. And now we found out that she had actually either gone bankrupt or done something. She'd been done for fraud in the past, and she wasn't using her real name, and we managed to find her real business. Greetings to the global membership of the new hyper universe from the Office of Compliance. You She's the compliance officer. Now, the real funny thing about this, if Sam is going to try to bring Hyperverse back, is he bringing back the, the band? <laughs> is he putting the band back together? Because this lady here is reading off a script and not even who she says she is. We're witnessing an historic moment as the Hypertech group launches Hyperverse. And you will hear from our founders, others on the corporate team, as well. A little bit about me. I have worked online and as a home-based business person for a lot of years. But one of the big challenges has always been trying to find a way to make a living, make a good living, using the internet. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. This is Rick, CMO of Molecular Future, also called MOF. I'm on... 
Now, we did a big research about him at the time, and I'm not really familiar with my own video because I haven't watched this for a while. But I'm pretty sure this guy was actually a paid actor. We found him in his acting career, and I might have a few slides coming up. To be here today in this online event to celebrate the launch of Hyperverse. I personally believe that the company is taking a step in the right direction. And I am 100% confident that it is going to be a big success in the metaverse sector. Today Interesting enough, I have, I have one guy who rang me up and told me he put $5 million into Hyperverse and obviously lost a lot. I think they did get, um, I think they did get thirty two thousand out at one stage, and then the time they had to bounce it through a few exchanges, he said, "I'm pretty sure the guy said they got sixteen hundred dollars out because it all went pear shaped as well." Anyway, so this is the real guy behind it. We did a bit of research on him. I've got something very important to share with you, which is the joint community event held by Molecular Future and Binance has started. Participants of this event can share rewards worth up to 10,000 USDT, including MOF Binance Red Envelopes, Binance uh, Bonus Vouchers, etc. This guy here, I think, was the worst presentation I've ever seen anyone do. But these are all the exchanges where the um, MOF was, um, you could convert your money into e MOF, you know, and that's how you sort of moved your money around Hyperverse. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Chris, CEO of Gennaro Network. Hi Chris. It's my pleasure to be here uh, to witness a monumentous event, which is the official launch of Hyperverse. Right, so this is Kalpesh Patel. Now bear in mind, he was involved in, um, he has been locked up for 12 months. He got released. He also got fined, I think, £330,000. You can read about it if you want. And I might actually have some videos about that. I'm not sure. And why I'm saying that, there was a um, some sort of fraud involving $25 million. And it had, I think, 12 businessmen involved in it. He did put his hand up and say he was guilty. And then he got 12 months in prison and a $330,000 fine. And when he got released out of prison and got involved in Hyperverse, the UK Mirror did a whole article on Superman, Super Scammer is back. And one of the videos that I'm working on at the moment is, oh, I think it was um, number five, about eight videos back. You can actually see him talking about the day when they must have read that in the newspaper and um, how he felt about it and how people don't do proper investigative journalism about him because they got the information wrong. But anyway, it's a bit of a laugh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Wow. What an event. Do you realize that we are currently creating history, ladies and gentlemen, and we're living in magical times? Welcome, family, friends, and partners around the world. If you allow it, this event could totally transform your life forever. And it didn't necessarily transfer people's life in a good way, unfortunately. I've had so many people come to me telling how much money they've lost to this Ponzi scheme. Do not get involved in them. Do not think you're smarter than the Ponzi scheme. Thank you so very much. Hello, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited to... Now, it took me ages to find Roman's real name, so I'm going to get my computer to read it. Roman Lethoiser. Now, he went AWOL, and he hated Hyperverse. He put a big video on the internet about how it was a scam and then went to town on it when he realized that all his money was lost. He was a real ambassador for um, Hyperverse at the time, and that's what makes this really kind of funny, watching everything unravel. So this end of it, if you watch this, a lot of people watched this 18 months ago, and they believed it true and real. Now when we're watching it back, we can see that everything was staged, and these people are just reading things off a script, and they're just doing it because they're receiving the big commission money. Now remember, everything that went into Hyperverse, 52% of the money that went into Hyperverse went straight out again. If, if people wanted to, they could withdraw the money from the commissions that this platform was paying. Hence why you get a yin and yang effect. You get people who are saying it's wonderful, I don't know what I'm talking about, um, because they're getting huge amounts of money. Yeah, I can tell you. I'm impressed, like um, many others here today, uh, by Hypertech Group um, embracing the immense opportunity of the Metaverse and launching the exciting Hyperverse 
uh, today. I'm pretty sure he was a radio announcer of some type, so he's obviously quite used to using the mic. As introduced, my name is Roman from Germany. I'm Roman from Germany, and I'm with Hyper Community since about six months. And I can tell you from my own experience, if you're looking for a serious business opportunity, you definitely came to the right place. But most important are the people behind. And I'm speaking about the management. I'm not saying they're two or three nice guys or something. I'm telling you, the whole crew is incredible. So he ate humble pie and changed that statement in videos. If everyone has been following this as much as I am, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, never got a copy of the videos that he did. I wish I did. Yeah. Now, if anyone knows any information about any of these people, updates, please do go to theheck.com, especially Keith Williams. So when you go to theheck.com, this is my website here. And on here, uh, you can go to contact us. And in there, you'll find a form you can fill out anonymously. So any information, we'll keep it. If you tell me to keep it anonymous, I will. But any names, addresses, phone numbers of people, um, I have a large database, which I will briefly show you. I have got a database of just every single person that has been involved in these Ponzi schemes. And to give you an example of the information I like, hopefully I'll be able to bring up the right page in a second. It's going to work. Brilliant. Uh, I'm going to use um, uh, Kate. Kate here. Now, with Kate, she's an Australian lady. She's literally in an aeroplane on the way over to see Sam Lee at the moment. She um, she did us a one-on-one -on -one presentation telling us what a good Ponzi scheme we are or Satoshi is. And she showed us that she had been withdrawing money straight away. And that's how these scams work, you see. So if you put money in and they tell you it's a dream and it's an investment opportunity, the person that's selling it to you is actually cashing up straight away. They get the money out because they know it can fall over any day. But since we've gone through and we've investigated Kate, I've found where she lives, where she works, I've found her family, because she said that she originally got involved in hyperbirth because her family invested, that she recommended they invest, and they did, and they lost their money, and she felt a bit guilty. But what we revealed is that she has a long history of promoting Ponzi schemes. She's, um, just to list a few. Stable Group, Crypto Wallets, Viddy Look, G999, Hyperfund, World Trader 365, Sea Wealth, Gold Rocks, Easy Shopping Cards, at V999, Carrot Bars, Freebay, Minibase, and Lickin' It. Yeah, so the reason I'm showing you that is because, um, you know, this lady has been promoting these Ponzi schemes for a long time. She still works for a living as a school teacher. Why would someone have to be working as a school teacher if these schemes make so much money? It's obvious because they're not making the money. They're just getting a side hustle. They're getting your money as you sign up. So Keith Williams was one of the ones that I really busted his balls, for use of a better word. And he now claims he went to pay uh, his tax and um, he went to pay a million and a half dollars in tax, and the tax department told him to keep his money, and then he's getting investigated for money laundering and fraud. Uh, so uh, money laundering and, um, yeah, fraud. So why that, that happened, I, I can tell you, but I have to shoot you. But since then, he took the exit strategy money that was up for offer to Kalpesh Patel. Kalpesh didn't want the... Um, ridiculous amount of money they offered him to do a slow exit strategy. But at the same time that Kalpesh resigned, Keith became the global sales representative. And the last time anyone's seen Keith anywhere is around about early December this year. And he was doing Zoom meetings every single uh, Wednesday and Saturday religiously, and now he's just dropped off the planet. Somebody that's in his community said uh, that he's got stage four cancer. And I waited for about a month, tried to get some word, find out whether that was true or not. But after I hear that he had to pay all this tax um, and got rejected, so he's been investigated, I assume he's either under house arrest or he's left the country. I have no idea where he is. So any information about these guys would be of great value as I'm trying to keep my database up to speed. And I want to know where these guys are because if there's a new Ponzi scheme or a scam starting up, 
I can picture it together, uh, put it together a lot quicker when I join the dots with my pieces I have. Members and guests, my name is Keith Williams and I am a VIP five-star member and supernode with Hypercommunity and now the newly launched Hyperverse platform. Before sharing my personal thoughts and story, I want to thank the Almighty for blessing us with such an awesome opportunity. I think that sucks because they bring in religious, uh, like they go after the black African community and they have, uh, they're have they always blessing and they're saying this is a blessing from God. But so many people have lost so much money to these schemes, it just infuriates me. Yeah, with all the leaders from uh, the Indian team, which I love so much, you guys are just amazing. Uh, we're here at the Crypto Expo in Dubai. I'm relaxed and having a lot of fun with the guys here. I wish you were here, but congratulations on all the work that you're doing. You, you have full power. I would say that you're the fastest growing community within our community. And that's something. So number one, you guys are number one. But uh, have the faith, have the belief, keep on pushing. The funny thing about that is the Indian community was the one they're blaming for creating the multiple accounts. So they would create 20 accounts. They'd buy $300 memberships for each of them. They would use their HVT to fund half the accounts, and then they would top it up with um, real USDT. So just to explain this, if you want to know the full story, because this is the complete history of the rise and fall of the Ponzi scheme, you could go buy a membership for $300, and within 600 days that you would get $900 back in rewards. So you get three times your money, which sounds too good to be true. What people were doing is you, when that matured, you could go buy another membership and you could use your reward you, um, HVTs to buy your next membership and you could get only use 50% of it. So then they would top it up using USDT and that means that people were gifting memberships to people and saying, I will pay you, I will pay for your membership fee of $300 and, but when it breaks even at $300, you've got to pay that money back. So no risk until you break even. And people were going, that's great. So those people would get the $300 in their accounts. They would see it going up in a daily event, and then they would probably pay for it out of their own pocket and give it directly to the other people. A lot of people did that. So that's money laundering. You're not allowed to do that. And that's where a lot of these people become unstuck. So if you're looking at prosecuting anyone, just think, did anyone gift you a free membership? The funny thing though, if you set up 20 accounts, there was 52% of the money that went straight out as soon as it went into the system. But if I referred Johnny and Johnny signed up, I would get 20%. And then when Johnny refers Mary, um, I would get another 15% of Mary's money. And then when Mary refers, um, I don't know, Betty, then I would get 10%. And then it would go down to 5%, 2%, 1%. But at the end of the day, if you basically set up 20 accounts and you fed a new person at the top, you could merge down all the accounts and you'd literally get 52% of the money. Now, my figures might not be 100% right, but what that means is it's daylight robbery because you sign up, you, make, you pay for this account, you couldn't lose. And that's what happened. Now, in India, they figured it out. And they were creating 20 accounts, 20 accounts, 20 accounts on a big, massive pyramid. And then they started to bleed money like a bitch. So the only, re the only way these Ponzi schemes actually survive is if you refer two people and they sign up. And that's how they sustain themselves. Now, that just you run out of stupid people that will keep signing up. Remember, they don't have a product or service. There's no other income stream other than people signing up for memberships. Some people were... The, 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 I think the most expensive membership was $800, $1,600, but you could just keep buying memberships. It was ridiculous. Anyway, let's listen from Ryan Jew. Now, this is a really interesting video, now I think back, because you've got Bitcoin Rodney in here, you've got Kalpesh Patel, and I didn't realize, but we actually you'll see a flash go off, and that's actually Keith Williams. And there's a couple of other people, I, I can't remember who they are, but these faces are very familiar to me now. We are family. Yes. Yeah, we're united. You know, we are we are going to change the world together. Yes. Right? So hyperfund can be a very good instrument to get user and get everyone come together. Then what? Then what? Let's let's say uh, to rock and roll the world. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Straight from the founder, he's absolutely clear 
There's only one direction, and that is up to the top. Right. So I just wanted to show you something else while we're here. If we go to um, my um, YouTube channel and you click on shorts, um, you'll see I've done quite a few shorts of Sam lately. But if you go down here enough, you will see um, I've got um, Ryan Jew doing the vacuuming. Um, there's no sound, Danny. Why is that? Oh, you just have to listen. <laughs> um, but this is him under house arrest. Now, the person that gave me these videos claimed that they had a baby with him. And um, and he'd also had, uh, it's, I don't know, but anyway, the, well, I was amazed that I actually got these videos because no one else actually got them. And then we've got other videos of him um, learning how to um, uh, ski. So here he is, you can't see it very well, but here he is singing in karaoke bar. Then he's off to a nightclub playing some Space Invader game, singing um, karaoke bar again. And then I think the next one is... Why is there no sound, Danny? I must have turned my sound off so I didn't disturb it. But anyway, so these are all videos that have leaked since he's gone into hiding. And literally, these are the only videos that um, we've actually managed to find of him since he's gone into hiding. And I got them, so I'm quite pleased about that. So if you have any information, please let us know. Now, guess who that is? That is Superman. But guess who this is? <laughs> Hey guys, Kalpesh Patel getting all excited. Look what we got. We got our card. Take a couple of hundred squiddles. Advice slip. Yeah, go on then. Why not? Let's see if it all works like it should. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, look at that. Look what's happening here. That's the sound I love. And we're in the money. We're in the money. A professional invite is one where you stay as little as possible to as many people as possible as quickly as possible. Hey, we got our VIP five stars in the house being treated to a night out on the town. Now that guy there, I used to call him Mr. Potato Head, but he is the voice of Hyperverse and we'll probably have a little bit of a listen to him and I'm going to get his name right. Mick Mulcahy. Mick Mulcahy. Um, he's from Ireland. He works for Cork. As a um, Cork Radio F, no, Red FM and Cork. Or FM, no, it must be Red FM Cork. Uh, it's a radio station. He falls in every now and again as a podcast host or something like that. But he's the voice, and he does seem to have a legal background because he thought that they'd come up with a per perfect formula for Hyperverse so they couldn't get um, sued or prosecuted if anyone tried to. Um, dun, dun, dun. Look at this. How beautiful are these people? They're bringing sexy back. Some have got a long way to go, but they are bringing it back. Uh, and all these guys I'm looking at, these are all off promoting other Ponzi schemes right now. It's just amazing. Come on. Woohoo! To the left, guys. To the left. All around to the left, to the left, to the left. So that lady there, blonde hair, next to the guy with the mask, uh, is Sharon James. Um, and her partner was arrested, I think, for fiddling with children. Uh, there's articles on the internet if you search for Sharon James, and you'll find that. I'm not saying she's doing that, but obviously she's hanging around. Now, she is rampant. She follows Kalpesh Patel, uh, Patel around with everything they do. I think Wednesday night is nuts and bolts training with Kalpesh. Uh, most of you can actually join these if you want. But um, right now, Kalpesh Patel, when he left Hyperverse, he went and started promoting GS Partners. And then uh, that only lasted two weeks. Then he started promoting Wee Wee Global. And now he's promoting Data Bank. Now, Data Bank's meant to be collapsing as we speak. People are complaining they can't get their money out. And now comes all the excuses because they've hit that terminal philosophy where they can't recruit any more people. And they start turning on the community, telling people they need to work harder and be smarter and get more people to sign up for these Ponzi schemes. That guy there, he's an Australian. Now, I always get his last name wrong. Boy, I do know a lot of people here.
But he is also following Kalpesh Patel around, and it's Goran Hemstrom. Goran Hemstrom. And he's just a disgusting person. Um, I've spoke to him. I think I've spoke to him. Have I spoke to him? I don't know if I spoke to him. I think I've um, emailed him. But um, his wife said that if he gets involved in, what, in, in, involved in one more multi-level marketing scheme, she's going to leave him. So he said. <laughs> anyway, he's still off. He's now promoting Wee Wee Global as well. Sexy V5's in the house. Oh, my goodness. It's all happening here no, tonight. <laughs> Oh yeah! Wow, here we go! Come on now! Yeah! Look at this! VIP in the house! Steam on fire! Woo, woo, woo. In December, for our uh, team gathering of 350 odd people, blows me away even now. It's just a stunner! It's massive, and of course, we are at the marina. Now, Cal Peach Patel is currently, I've heard, uh, living on the 56th story of a building in the penthouse. And he rang, well, he didn't ring me up, he, he sent me a message on WhatsApp one day and he said that I'm just as bad as Sam Lee because he doesn't like Sam Lee. And this is why you'll never see Cal Peach Patel promoting um, Hyperverse as. Sam said he wants all the VIP fives back. Good luck there, Sam. Um, but he said that um, he didn't like me because I was telling lies. I was telling people that Kalpesh Patel was making a million dollars a day from Hyperverse just before it crashed. And he said I was not correct with that information. So I did actually ask him how much money he was making and he wouldn't tell me. And I said, well, if you're not going to tell me, um, it's hard for me to get the right information, isn't it? So you don't really know how much money... But this guy is rampant. He's still promoting Ponzi schemes, but he is living a pretty nice lifestyle when I see his clips on his YouTube channel. Absolutely stunning. With my nephew, Harinda, Dippy, the kids, and of course, yours truly. Come and join us sometime. Dubai is happening. We're about to enjoy a lovely dinner. Catch you soon. Right, so the interesting thing, is uh, Sue Patel, even though she's got the same name as Cal Pish Patel, um, they're meant to be engaged and they're planning a wedding. So if you uh, have anything to do with their wedding, please let me know because I would like an invitation. Anyway, this is quite funny. This is, I've forgotten the guy who did this. Hopefully I've given the credits to him, um, but they managed to get his YouTube channel taken off the internet, which is a real um, narc. But anyway, hopefully this is funny. At the moment, all the focus really is on Hyperverse. This is going to be the biggest uh, Ponzi scheme that we have run. We are starting to take our money out. We stop in the withdrawals. We starting to get a little bit of bad press in the newspaper. But everything going very, very good. Uh. So, obviously, this is when all the withdrawals are starting to happen. And they're coming up with excuses, stalling tactics. They're claiming that they're having conversations with corporate uh, I did research on who corporate was over the last 18 months, and I'm 100% convinced it's Ryan Jew, Jaden Wee, Sam Lee, and there's two Kevins. And if you have a look at my picture in the background, uh, right next to my hand, um, there's a little uh, Chinese uh, guy. His name is, his English name is Kevin, and he is the first time that anyone's ever seen him is the, today. I just put him in there. I've got a photo of him. If anyone ever wants that, let me know. But I believe he is the chief financial officer and he's the one that has um, control of all the money if there's any money left. Right, back to workshop mode. And it's here. And this was um, said in Hindi and English. I'm not sure what version we have, but it was just lies trying to calm the community at the time. Technical issues, ka? withdrawals, ka issues, after here. Some negative thinking. Obviously, I immediately upgraded. And that also allows me, it showed me how many of my team had already upgraded. So I'm assuming now, this is an assumption, I'm assuming that by me upgrading, it allows me to receive the rewards. So if you don't know what's happening, why he's telling people they had uh, Hyperverse 1 and then Hyperverse 2 came out, they changed the rewards to four times your money. So you're going to get four times your money in rewards, uh, except rather than it paying out in 600 days, they changed it to 1,330 days because the money was leaking like a sieve. 
and uh, they couldn't figure out, they believe it was because of the multiple accounts uh, and they just couldn't figure out what was happening. And then later, Hyperverse Corporate made a statement on their Medium account saying that they had a hacker at this time hack into their platform that Sam Lee provides, could be Sam Lee, and hold them for ransom. Um, but they managed to stop large withdrawals getting out of the exchanges uh, because they had inside contacts with uh, crypto exchanges like Binance and the like. And then eventually the hacker gave up and took a $400,000 paycheck for finding a bug in their platform. That's what they told everyone. Two days later, after Sam Lee got on the video, said my software is bulletproof, the article got pulled uh, from Medium, and we've never heard anything else about it since. However, Danny did manage to do a whole video on that article. If you want to go do it, go to the comment section to ask me for the article if you can't find it, and I'll find it and stick it in there. Um, but it's just breathtaking the excuses that you they would what was happening right now when I'm thinking back and what eventuated are two different things. And you can see them making this up as they go. Because Kel Pish and um uh Keith, oh, Keith were basically saying they were talking to corporate. They weren't, they only had access to them via uh, WhatsApp. So it's just ridiculous what they were making up at the time. Guessing that might be for smaller accounts. Again, this is just me making stuff up for you. I'm guessing you came into this project with the vision in mind and not just uh, how do I triple uh, a membership value, right? I mean, if, you, if that was all that motivated you, then uh, of course you can stay where you are. But if you bought into the vision of where this company is going, what we're doing and what we're building, then 2.0 is definitely the way to go. So go ahead, click whatever options you've got. Guys, it was absolutely crazy that they were telling people that because it was all about the money. It was never about the vision. It was never about the white paper that's, you know, because Sam reckons that the white paper, which we'll have a look at near the end, remember these timestamps in here, but the white paper, um, was actually the dream that they were selling, but they never mentioned the white paper. You, the presentation that um, whatever his name was, I've forgotten his name, Mick used to do was all about the rewards and what you're going to get if you refer people in and the mini multi-level marketing side of it. So it's just ridiculous that they were saying that now that, oh, you bought into the vision. No, people didn't sign up because of the vision. They signed up because of the three times rewards you're going to get if you gave them your money. Alpesh back with uh, another quick update on this 2.0 opportunity. I've had a few people still a little bit unsure, a little bit confused, still trying to justify and make excuses for uh, holding on to their meager 3X. Listen, guys, get with the vision, all right? This company's up to big stuff for all of us. And so if you're ready to play ball with the company who's looked after all of us for all this time and continues to and will continue to, then go into your back office, log in, and convert your 3x into a 4x membership. It's free. It costs nada, nothing. All you've got to do is click on upgrade to 2.0. And the minute you've done that, instantly you get free rewards. Your pending balance, watch, it will shoot up by 33% just because you clicked the button. So grab that. It's a phenomenal offer by the company. I don't know if that offer is going to be around after the 15th. So some of you like playing roulette and, uh, you know, kind of what's going to happen afterwards. Let me find out. Just make sure you're not one of those people that makes a silly delaying decision and ends up not getting the great deal that is on, available to everybody right now, which is to take your old rewards, bump them up, and get qualified into the 2.0. Some of the people said, I've bought a 400 already. Does that mean that I've already qualified? No, it does not necessarily mean that. If there are any 3X memberships still sitting in your pending rewards, then you do need to go for the free upgrade and convert those 3X into 4X and start participating in the future. This is a huge, huge opportunity, guys and girls. Do not get caught up in the small stuff. Trying to scrape the bottom of the barrel for your 0.5%, you're gonna miss the big picture here. So this is a personal appeal from me to you to just do what needs to be done. The company's done everything for us and continues to do everything for us to give us a phenomenal future. Let's not let the company down and uh, support everything they're doing and go with their vision. Thank you. Much love. Let's get it done. So no doubt Tizzy Taylor was probably holding the camera for him. So it's just sickening that he actually says that because right at that point, I know that the wheels were falling off. It's denied registration. I don't know why. All right. So, Reach out to her, see if she can help you out. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. So this is uh, in the Zoom meeting. So every Saturday morning, Keith would do Welcome to the Hyperverse Community Leadership Training with Keith and his best mate, uh, Cal Peach Patel. 
And just some of the comments, you've got Mario now who is actually promoting We Are All Satoshi. Uh, or was it Vidi? Look, I can't remember. Might have that wrong. But you just listen to this guy, Anthony. He was so pissed off that his, he couldn't get his money and he'd been trying for weeks. Everyone's pissed off because they can't do their withdrawals. It's just maybe customer service. I don't know about you guys. I've been trying to reach it from like December and I'm just not able to reach it. I get in line and maybe they, they you know, I'm not worried about it. I'm sure they're going to fix it. But I think as a company, if we can have also I, good customer support, I think that's going to be great, you know? And that's, I, I know, that's I know that they've, added, they've added a lot yeah. of people recently that yeah, continue to do so, they're training them up. Also, rather than doing yep. a live chat, which at the moment, because of the, the changes, it gets very busy. Oh, yeah. Uh, just saying mm -hmm. that tickets are getting responses. I try to, I, I try to leave a message as well. I don't know, maybe if it was my phone, maybe okay. from Safari, but it wouldn't let me. It says, try again later. So I just <laughs> okay. wasn't able to do it. I'm sure they're going to fix it. But I think once they fix that, and maybe yeah. get a more, so maybe and the they're customer, they're all more, they're 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 more support. Sure. Well, and then the are you sure? Gonna be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? It's almost perfect right now, in my opinion. I love it. So anyway, right. thank you guys. The presentation. The presentation is the bridge, right? To their dream. And yeah, that was just people complaining. This is Kalpish Patel. Now, what you don't realize is that every Saturday morning, they'd have a, a, a thousand people in a Zoom meeting. And when it got maxed out, they'd have an overflow link and they'd have another 900 people in there, up to a thousand people in there as well. But these people aren't here because they're learning about Hyperverse. These people are learning how to become multi-level marketers. And some of the sales techniques that these people are using just to sell this to friends and family are breathtaking. And this is the training that Kalpish Patel was good at. And he convinced people to be hard salesmen to get that sale across the desk. No, it wasn't, wasn't selling the vision. Oh, no. It was selling um, the memberships. And the, every time that they sell a membership, these guys just made more and more money. The vehicle. Oh, by the way, I've got some really, really great news coming soon. Um, had a conversation with the uh, corporate and uh, we're working on a shorter presentation that uh, will be compliant. And I'll be able to come out and deliver it without having to read a script. Yes. <laughs> and some of you are already thinking, but it's not that easy, Gauss. <laughs> it actually is. It goes like this. JB, thank you for showing up to the Zoom. I saw you were there till, till the end. I really appreciate it. I hope you loved it as much as I thought you would. Tell me, what was your favorite part, my friend? Well, a couple of bits I wasn't sure about. Great. Before you go into that, let me introduce you to my sponsor or my upline professional, my upline expert, my upline V1. Let me get you on a call with one of uh, our team leaders who has been around a lot longer than I have and is probably in a much better space to answer your questions than I will be. I'm new and so I'm learning as I'm going along. I want to share this with you early because I want to take this journey with you. I want to win together with you. Let's get them on a call now. And whatever questions you've got, feel free to ask them. Let's get clear so we can move forward together. Is that cool? Yes. Great. Bang. Add them to the call. Knock it out of the ballpark. Like whatever it takes. And how do you stay in the game? You stay plugged in, right? Don't delude yourself. The minute you miss one meeting, it can easily be a slippery road to missing the next one. So hold yourself accountable. I'm not saying you can never miss a meeting. It happens. So I had a phone call with a friend yesterday and he was like, nine of my friends are in crypto and it's, it's, they've all lost their money. And, and I don't, and he's like almost yelling at me on the phone. And I finally, I just said to him, I said, Hey, listen, I'm calling you because I love you and I love Lynn and I want you to take advantage of this. So he said, okay, he said, I'll come on and, and listen. <laughs> love it. There you go. Interrupt so, their flow, man. Boom. Get yeah, in. Thank love you. It. He already said, interrupt their flow and just go for the sale. She didn't care about her friend. She, I wonder what her friend Lynn thinks of her now. Uh, breathtaking stuff, but this is the so type of training. And this was, um, I'm looking at the um, date stamp. It's the 13th of December, 2021, just before the, well, obviously the wheels, that was a beginning before the wheels started falling off. So those people there, I'll just change screen so you can get them all. Uh, you got Brenda Chunder. Um, she has now um, gone AWOL. No one knows where she is. You've got 
Golran, Himstorm. Um, he's still promoting Ponzi schemes, Wee Wee Global, and I haven't seen him promoting Data Bank with Calpeach, which is unusual. And by the way, if you read the terms and conditions of Wee Wee Global, you can see that they're not actually allowed to promote any other Ponzi scheme while they're promoting theirs. Now, Wee Wee Global decided that, I'm just going to flip back into here, Wee Wee Global decided they would do a five, um, go run five events, uh, four in Australia and one in New Zealand. I rang up all the venues and tried to cancel the event, telling them they were running a Ponzi scheme. And then we managed to get them flagged by the FMA, which is the financial regulators for New Zealand, as a, a possible Ponzi scheme. So 12 hours before they were going to, I think it might have been 24 hours before they were going to run the event in Christchurch, Diego, which is the head, the master uh, ambassador for We Wear Global, decided it wouldn't be a good idea to come to New Zealand, thinking he was probably going to get arrested. So they held the plane up uh, in Sydney as they got his bags off, because he changed his mind. And then I had a guy by Stephen Condos, which I've done videos on, um, because I texted him, I said, oh, look, you know, I'm going to this event um, tomorrow and it's just been flagged as a Ponzi scheme and I don't want to invest because I'd had a conversation with him earlier that I was interested in investing $50,000. So he brings me up while he's in the airport and he's going, I recorded the conversations on one of my videos and um, he basically tells me um, not to worry and it's it's just an advisory, it's not saying they are a Ponzi scheme, all the nine yards, such a hard case video, one of the best ones I did. But I found out, the Steve Condos guy, that he had, had a whole history of promoting Ponzi scheme, K-Bars, um, uh, what's the other one, the queen of the queen of crypto, something coin, one coin, um, one life. Um, Agana Gold Coffee. Um, he's done three. I went through the whole list and got every single Ponzi scheme. So these guys aren't, you know, uh, shocking. But what I'm saying is, We Wee Global isn't a good opportunity. It's going to fall over any day. They're claiming to even have a cell phone that's going to um, mint uh, crypto, which is just ridiculous. So let's go back to workshop mode and just have a look at those people. So we've got missing Keith Williams. We've got missing Brenda Chunder. Um, we believe I did hear that she bought a house in Florida and she bought a house in Dubai, so she could be over there. Gorman seems to be living in Dubai. His wife, I think, is Norwegian, and I have a feeling that they he may go back and forth, or she's from Norway, somewhere like that. And then the ta the worst one is obviously Kalpesh Patel. He's still around, and Tammy Jackson, who's now fully in bed with. Um, um, we are all Satoshi. She's running, basically, she's like um, Sam Lee's left-hand lady of, of some sort. Pretty sure I got that right. And then, obviously, I always get mixed names wrong, and I'm going to read that again. Mick Mulcahy. And it's Red FM and Cork. You'll hear him on the radio every now and again. If you search for him, you'll find him. But he was the voice of Hyperverse. So, obviously, um, we're going to listen to some of that now. Hello, Gorman. Just to show you them the together. I saw this, I then thought to myself, how do I break this to my wife? Because mm. it was like, <laughs> if I tell her that I'm looking at something else, <laughs> instead of a job. So I said, look, I know we've been through a lot. And by the way, I've been in network marketing for 31 years now. September last year was 31 years. Right? So everyone I know, if I call them and I haven't spoken to them for a while, guess what they're thinking? So interesting enough, um, that recording I got was literally a guy who used to record the screen by holding up his camera, and that was how I could get access to these videos. As time went on, people who, who couldn't withdraw were giving me access to the hyper community back end, and the password's 1111, in case you wanted to know. But anyway, that's all. I don't even think it's there until they caught on to me. And then I had another VIP5 that was using the church recording equipment and then sharing the link to the um, private YouTube video that was uploaded by his minister of the church who was sharing it with the congregation. Now this guy was a VIP five. He said he introduced 180 people to it and his team grew to 6,000 people. He made, I think he said 180 were $200,000 out of it. So th he wasn't even a big, big guy. So th these VIP fives, like this is why Gorman, I always get his name wrong. Go, go, run, go, ran, go, ran, he ran. Um, we're so happy because these guys 
were making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And he's obviously said he's been doing network marketing for 31 years, but this was the best opportunity of his lifetime. And he's also worried to tell his wife because she must be sick of all these opportunities. This is the best, you know, what I'm getting at. But anyway, I wanted to show people his history a little bit in this video. So let's have a wee listen to him um, telling his multi-level marketing story. Hey, mate. Hey. Thank hey, you. Man. Welcome. Thanks for your time. Welcome to my home. So um, how long have you been in... Uh, we'll just get straight into it. Yeah. We'll try and get it. So how Nothing long like have, being straight. <laughs> how long have you been in Jeunesse for? Uh, I'm coming up to my... I'm just over my 11th month. So, you know, having this chat... It doesn't actually build our business, no. okay? So every day, engage in activity where you're doing something in that, along those lines, okay? And talk to your coach or mentor about, you know, exactly how long, for how long you're going to do that. The industry that does that. So if you want to step it up a little bit more, we have this level called director. And there... I've just shown you that he's got a long history of doing Zoom meetings. And when COVID happened, we all went on to Zoom. Uh, and and um, a lot of lonely people found it a great comfort. But unfortunately, these Ponzi schemes grew rampant, and um, and you can see that these guys took advantage of um, trying to sell people, um, you know, get-rich-quick opportunities. Are going to be people on this call who are going to generate this in the first week of business. And Goran Hemstrom, I just want to welcome everyone that uh, is on the call here and everyone that's... And boys, this can be serious. So this is when it goes back to, oh, oh, there you go, hyper, oh, that's a hyperverse presentation. It shows you the different account structures as you grow up through the ranks. And um, I don't actually, I've never really figured out what a VIP5 is. I, I've never really figured out how much money you were to bring in or how many people you were to bring in before you become VIP5 status. But anyway, this might might be right in front of us. So, example, at VIP 5 star equals 5 million HU. So you must get, at the time, HU was the money. And it looks like, um, theoretically, it was dollar for dollar. So if you got to the top rank, I think $3,000 a day. I don't know. Anyway, if you're cleverer than me, have a look at that and see if you can work out how much rewards people got for promoting it. Stuff here. So as you grow... On to 125,000, you are now a pro, you're picking up 2%, and you can see it ratchets up potentially all the way to what we call VIP five star. What if you could be a superhero for just 30 minutes a day? Ooh, it'd be nice. I'd like to be the crypto Ponzi scheme Avenger. Thanks. Golran? Golran? How do you say your name, mate? Wish you just had a normal name like, you know, Bob. A superhero. Now, I love superheroes. I love superheroes. Oh, there's one. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's got his arm around him. Now, Brenda Chunga. I used to call her Brenda Chunda, but I'll be more respectful. She's gone missing. No one knows where she is. She was helping some boys out with information, but she's decided to go AWOL. So I did this video about her, and let's meet this lady here. Now, Keith Williams was talking to her in a Zoom meeting, I think about a year before it crashed, and he said that she was responsible for, she was the biggest referrer in America. And he said she had brought in, get this, $640 million worth of revenue for Hyperverse. Isn't that incredible? So she's a real key pin player in all this. She claims <laughs> that she only ever made a million dollars out of Hyperverse. But in one of the competitions they had, she won a million dollars, and I think that's what she was claiming she was doing. So all her money, she theoretically, I mean, all my stuff I hear is all third hand, so who knows whether how much truth is in it, but I did hear she purchased two houses, one in Florida and the other one in Dubai, in case it all went pear-shaped. And now she's gone missing, I think she might be in Dubai. But it was really funny because I was watching Sam Lee crash a Zoom meeting of Vidilook when they were releasing version 2. Now, just briefly, Vidilook was a Ponzi scheme that lasts for six weeks. And you, what you did, you could buy, the maximum membership was $1,500, and you could get $75 a day if you watched, I think, 150 commercials a day. And they were claiming that by watching the commercials, advertisers were paying you to do so, which is a load of rubbish. They also claimed that they had 100-plus partnerships with people like Google AdWords. Um, TikTok, Facebook, um, 
you know, Yahoo, the whole nine yards, and it was just all rubbish. Anyway, that lasted six weeks, six weeks fell over, and then they said it was only a beta version. And um, they're now going to release version two. Now, the other day, they released, released version two, and Sam Lee crashed their Zoom party when they were doing a 24-hour sale. And they had things 50% off. So you could go in there and buy a Viddy Look membership for 50% off. But what they didn't tell people, the rewards were also 50% off. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's right, but that's what I heard. So it wasn't really a 50% off sale. It was basically a half price membership, but half the rewards. So that was really dumb. Anyway, they said within that 24 hours, they had 2,000 new subscribers and they sold 12,000 packages, which blows me away that people still invest in these. But people think they're cleverer than the Ponzi scheme. They believe that they'll get in quick. The first rule is to get your initial investment back and then you play with house money. And then they try selling it to friends or family to get their commissions. And as I said earlier on, a lot of these people are taking the money out straight away. They don't even believe what they're selling. So what did I start telling you that for? Um, oh, yes, because when the video look was doing their presentation, they had a special guest, and would you believe Des Amy's sidekick, Susan Lawrence, was there. All done up with her hair and brads, and there she was. And I thought, these guys are not loyal to one Ponzi scheme. They just bounce around all the different Ponzi schemes, and they'll sell sand to the Eskimos and ice to... Uh, the Arabs. I think I got there around the wrong way. But you get the idea. Anyway, so Brenda Chanda, she's one of the worst of the worst, but we haven't seen her for a while. Last time I did see her on video, she looked shocking, and I think she was feeling um, perplexed. Hello, everyone. My name is Brenda Chunga, a.k.a. Bitcoin Beauty, and I am from Maryland. That is the DM. Single mother, would you believe? B, which stands for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. It's been a total transformation in my life. That's where wealth is created. She's making a ton of money. Making a ton of money. And then one day I got a chance to speak with her on a three-way. A three-way? And my business partner and mentor and friend. Come join us. Be a part of this great. If you know or recognize any of these people, I'd love to know their names. I've got databases, as I showed you previously. Um, but sometimes the, some of these people are the dark, uh, the hidden hidden pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. Opportunity, this great platform. She shares what she knows. She shares her love. There's people in hyper. It's funny. I watched this video originally and they didn't mention the name Hyperverse. And then Blondie here spurted out the name uh, and uh, it was so awesome because then we could connect this all together. And they really don't even speak English and I'm just absolutely floored that this is something that is just fantastic for everybody. You just plug in and it works. It's been great. Yeah, Changed my life. I'm doing better than I ever have. I was very skeptical to begin with. You can ask this guy, he's my sponsor. <laughs> and. Uh, then uh, things, I started getting more and more confidence. So now I'm ready to share it with the world. And uh, I really do believe we're going to be around for a very long time. Yeah. Yep, about eight months from now when this was recorded, would you believe? It's, uh, it's going to be fantastic. So I'm not going to talk about this little thing because we're on a freaking super yacht. Now that's Bitcoin Rodney. And I think that might have been his uh, Lamborghini um, parked outside. You saw um, Brenda Chanda <laughs> um, next to. Um, he was there, but he is um, he was uh, doing something interesting at the time because what he was doing is they, they were stopping the withdrawals, but not for everybody. The VIPs could still withdraw, and he was basically telling people that if they transferred their UHU tokens to his account he would take the money out for them and take 30 percent for the privilege so there was just you know stuff like that going on all the time and he got to a point where he had 45 million um hut dollars in his account that he was given away because he knew it was worthless my name is brenda chunga aka bitcoin beauty so the information i'm going to share here with you today was shared with me about a year and two months and we have just rebranded everything, staying ahead of the trend. This is an exchange. And I'm going to have a look at the 978 people that are trying to learn about 
Sorry, the sounds all over the place. I'm trying my best to adjust it as we go. Yes. Would also be. Yeah, you may see your own name in there. Sure. Feel free to. I want to say I'm so excited about Hyperverse and where we're all going. This is the great lady <laughs> from Hyperverse. Thank you. We have got Kalpesh Patel, we've got Tammy and Brenda coming a little later on. Thanks to Goran for doing one a little uh, earlier on. Uh, I did call him Mr. Potato Head, but somebody said that wasn't respectful, so I won't do it again. Notice that your videos are muted. Uh, you can't turn them on. Uh, please don't raise your hands if you can. Please avoid raising hands because in this system, the hands continue to raise and to distract the presenter. So I'm going to go for a clean recording here. We have 1,000 people in the room and welcome to all of you from wherever you are in the world, day, morning, night. And welcome to everybody who's joined us on the custom live streaming. So he's uh, currently working for Red FM Cork, where he was. I emailed them. I even rang them, left a message on the phone saying, do you realize that one of your people who do your presentations is actually a scammer? I never heard back, but I thought I'd try. Service. This is Mick Mulcahy. I'm coming to you from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates uh, before we go <laughs> to an event here tomorrow. And uh, greetings to everybody who has traveled for that event as well. But Unique. Couple that with a globally legally compliant rewards club where you can gather as many rewards points as you wish because it's not a financial product and it's not an investment. And you're starting to come around the perfect storm. So these guys truly believe that no one can ever prosecute them or sue them. And they're probably right. Because um, the problem is, I've listened to talks with Kalpesh Patel and he's telling everyone to turn their cameras on because he wants to make them liable because theoretically there's one and a half million people that invested in Hyperverse. Sam Lee said there's two million people, but what would he know? He's full of lies. Now, we did, um, I helped promote a petition. Now, they've only had 1,700 people sign the petition. So you're telling me out of 1.5 million people, only 1,700 people are worried about losing their money? And I've heard of stories that you wouldn't believe. So my, my point to that is, it's, I have friends or family that have introduced to it, and they're in the same boat as you. I've heard that all day long. And I say to people, well, the person that introduced you to it, you should go after them because I believe they were providing you financial advice and they weren't a regulated financial advisor. A lot of the time, these people that introduce you set up your accounts and handle the money. If that is the case, that's called money laundering. You're not allowed to do that. And if they have done that, you could literally go back to that person and say to them, I'm going to go get a lawyer if you don't give me my money back that you took off me. All this sort of stuff. But these guys thought they were so legally compliant. The honest truth of it is, I've talked to you know government organizations about this, and they said that no one held a gun to their head um, when they handed over their crypto. In fact, it looks like a lot of people were greedy. They were hoping to get three times their investment, a too-good-to-be-true opportunity. So the feds, or the people who who can do something about this, aren't interested in going after these scammers. So it's a bit of a, you know, and it's because there's so many people involved, you know, they literally glaze over. So they probably are going to get away with it. So that's why I do my videos and I name and shame people and make you, you know, create public awareness um, around these scammers. I mean, I just had a guy try to sue me for $3.8 million in the New Zealand High Court. He filed the paperwork in the whole nine yards. I spent $36,000 defending myself and then an hour and a half before a high court judge looks at a affidavit that was 217 pages that would have fully destroyed the guy he decided to file a discontinuance which is ridiculous but my point is these guys do go after people like me who are exposing them so you know do the nice thing if i'm giving you value do hit the thumbs up on this video and to subscribe and hit the bell and be notified when new videos come out you know i'm not doing this for clicks i'm not doing this for an audience i'm building a community that will help create public awareness around fighting these scams. And once again, if you go to dehec.com and you have any information on any of these people that you see, otherwise these guys are going to seep through the floorboards, so to speak. And that's why I'm gathering that database that you saw. And everybody that's in these videos, I've got a long list of names, like Yvonne Henry is literally in a plane on the way over to Dubai to meet Sam Lee. And she's rampant at promoting We Are All Satoshi. And you think, oh, that's, you know, she probably thinks it's a real thing. She's also rampant at promoting Vidilook. So she's promoting two of these Ponzi schemes at the same time. And she's got her sidekick friend with her, um, which is Kate Longley. And it's just sickening that these people do this for a living. I, I'm an entrepreneurial sort of person. I'm not going to do this for a living, but I'll expose these guys because this is not what entrepreneur, 
entrepreneurship is. Now add in the strong relationships uh, that these guys have right across the blockchain space. Add in their heritage and where they're going with this huge group of companies. Uh, and we are on a vehicle to success. So I just want to reiterate, if we go back to the web browser and we go back to my video, remember we've got um, Project Frugal here. He's done 10 videos and these guys have literally tried to take his videos offline. You've got that video I did with um, the dog and it's just, it's quite a good video. I'm just going to turn it up for a second and listen to it. And I'll pour my way through it. Ha, ha, ha. That was quite funny, wasn't it? All right, so Hypertech Group, historical timeline document provided by Vinny from Project Frugal. So that, that there goes through the whole timeline. So if you're thinking that Sam Lee's not a crook, then what you really want to do is you want to go through here and see how much he tried to get to be rich. He's not rich. He's literally stolen over $50 million from Australians with Ryan Jew, gone into hiding, popped his head up in Dubai, and now he's trying to scam you again. So the whole timeline's there for you to read. You've got no excuse. Negligence is not going to be good enough. Remember, go to Behind MLM. Read articles about these guys. Um, Oz, who runs this website, does deep dives into these people. Even he looks at the website code, and he found out that the, the website design was a straight-off-the-shelf template, and it's Webflow HTML website template, and it's next-gen. So there's the template that they're using. So if you go to Sam, he's using this template with that picture. Now, that picture in the background, that movie that you're looking at, is owned by... Dan's Digital. Dan's Digital came to me and said, do you have the contact details for Hyperverse? Because they are selling the metaverse. And they're talking about building a metaverse, um, you know, on the blockchain and all this sort of high-tech terminology. Now, this video is not even theirs to use. They don't have the copyright. So this company wants to go after them. Uh, this morning, yesterday, I sent um, Sam Lee's passport and his phone number to a lady called Susan who works for Dan's Digital. Um, just to show, um, to say, hey, look, they've relaunched us. So if you want to have a look at this website today, you go to thehyperverse.stable.limited. Now, if, if I take out all the gobbledygook and just go to stable.limited, you can see that this goes to Stable Deo, which is Sam's Lee's. You know, and these are the five guys that you're looking at all, in all these meetings. And, you know, like I've researched these guys as well. And it's just, you know, where does it stop? And they're just, and at the moment, they're probably wondering why Sam Lee's trying so hard to get traction. It's because he can't get people in his Zoom meetings. Literally have a photo of him laying on the floor, begging people to invite friends into his Zoom meetings. He had 200 and, 350 one day, 280 or 260 the next day. And, um... And he just can't get traction. So then the, he gets in his car, drives over, over to Videlux launch where they had 3,000 people, claims that he was the reason why they had 3,000 people in there, hijacked the meeting, telling everyone to go to his telegram groups, trying to hijack the community. Next thing, he claims that he's going to be starting up Hyperverse again and getting the VIPs back together. Hence why I'm doing this video, because I'm showing you that these VIPs that he thinks he can wingle back together are actually off promoting other Ponzi schemes. And the only reason Hyperverse gained traction is because these guys are betrayed professionals and they know how to build communities. And Sam is just trying to steal with communities. So Tammy Jackson is fully in bed with either Vinnie Look or We Are Satoshi. I forget which one she's doing. Again, it's Tammy Jackson, and I am so glad that you are sitting here before me tonight because I have something that's really, really awesome that I am about to show you tonight. So if you guys are ready, if you guys are ready, what we're going to put in the chat tonight is hyper fun, F-U-N, hyper fun. That's what we're going to put in the chat for tonight to get us going. Right, so the next one's quite shocking if you see me in action. I was pretty green when this next part came up here. I just want to say it started off as um, a hypertech group, hyper capital, hyper fund, hyperverse, hyper nation, hyper cosmos, hyper planet, hyper store, and they have hyper NFTs. All those hypers are the re rinse and repeat um, resales pitches, are, you know, and this just goes on and on. But the hyperverse days was when this thing really got some traction. So I actually managed to gate crash a couple of Zoom meetings, and obviously everyone knows who I am now when I turn up, and I get kicked out. But I did actually get to have a conversation with Keith Williams, which I was so proud about at the time, 
And if you haven't seen this, this is cringeworthy. Um, how do I sleep at night scamming people, Danny? Is yes, that why Keith you come Williams. Up make that comment. Great, Danny. I'm so happy about that. So are we all scamming people, Danny? Is that what we're all doing? Every single member on here scamming the next member. Is that yes, what you're doing, you, Danny? that is correct. You are. The point is Danny. you shouldn't scam people. There's no, no well, product or service. This company has no well, product Danny. or service and it only survives Danny. on memberships. And that is a Ponzi scheme. Doing Whereabouts is Stephen Reese Lewis? There's no digital footprint of him. He doesn't exist on the internet. So is there no digital footprint of anybody? Because I think Stephen's Twitter is on Twitter. Is he not on Twitter? It's not his account. We've done. We've got two Twitter accounts, and it's repeated the same information so the twice. Thing tell me, the next thing you're going to tell me, Danny, that the Who Exchange and Coin W doesn't exist. You're also going to say that uh, Hyper BC, which is uh, connected to a regulated bank, another Hyper. <laughs> <laughs> I just had an interest at Hyper BC Bank who's talking about is a bank, but it's only in United Arab. It's, and it's it's um it, it's a very small bank. But you might have noticed a lot of Ponzi schemes and scams are coming out now with credit cards and they're telling you that you can get rewards. You also get rewards if you sign people up. But they are, it does not mean they're a real regulated bank. Uh, in fact, there was no such thing. These banks um, that they start up just aren't real genuine banks. It's hard to explain because I'm not in the banking industry, but Hyper BC is not a real thing. He was um, ditching me quite hard there, and I was a bit green, a bit better now, well, a little bit. <laughs> let's talk. Let's me introduce you to our CEO, Stephen Reese Lewis, who's the CEO of Hyperverse, and Stephen. Right. So Jaden Wee was the CEO of Hyperverse, and then he resigned. But I still believe Jaden Wee is heavily involved with Ryan Jew. Now, in here, they claim that Stephen Rees Lewis has spent a decade in the fintech industry. Um, he also uh, worked for Goldman Sachs. I can't even say that last word. And he also um, sold his company to Adobe. Um, he was um, secured nearly $10 million from an angel investor to launch an IT consulting startup. Um, then... Hypertech Group, a strong, oh, I'm going to read all this wrong, but my point of this whole exercise is Stephen Reese Lewis, which you'll see in a few seconds, was basically a paid actor. No one has ever found him. I even offered a $100 PayPal reward to anyone that could lo locate the real actor. Now, in this presentation that you've just watched of me, there's already been two paid actors, and I just watched another big Ponzi scheme that just fell over and they literally hired a Hollywood actor to pretend he was the CEO of the company. I don't know how they get away with it. But anyway, uh, this is a common uh, occurrence. So this guy does not exist. He has not got any of the information. Like he sold, uh, he developed a company which was later sold to Adobe. Now Vinny, who I've talked about, he did a deep dive into this. There's no such data. There's no sale of any company to Adobe. It's just total bullshit. So they they don't even they tell you to do due diligence, but no one does because they believe the person that introduced them to it is an uh, industry expert. Has been over ten years in fintech and IT. Is focused on business management, project cons consultation, and communication. He started his career as a derivative, a derivative trader with Goldman Sachs. Then began his own web development company, which he later sold to Adobe. And uh, then he moved more into this space, the cryptocurrency space. He's a proven business builder with extensive experience across emerging. Hello, everyone. This is Stephen Reese Lewis, CEO of Hyper. Hello everyone, this is Stephen here. Hello everyone, this is Stephen, CEO of Hyperverse. Hi, everyone. This is Stephen, CEO of Hyperverse. This is Stephen, the CEO of Hyperverse. Open your thinking and join us in accelerating the construction of the digital future where you are only limited by your own imagination. Lastly, we are aware that a small number of members are still experiencing trouble with some of the withdrawals and accounts being frozen. Some of it is still user error. Oh yeah, blame the users. And can be fixed by using Firefox on a computer. <laughs> Empty your cache. <laughs> And of course, some of the accounts that are frozen are complicated by people who use multiple accounts or found ways to try to scam the company. Oh my God, the company is getting scammed. This is when the wheels are really falling over. And 
going by the company who published that article I talked about earlier on about how they had a hacker and they got locked out and all the money was trapped, um, this was even a lie that they were telling the community. Be sure to take advantage of the Hyperverse 2.0 four times promotion. So that was stalling tactics or an exit strategy. Increase the rewards and stretch it out to over double the original time and no one would notice. We will continue to do our best to provide only the best products and services for our members. And as time went on, I don't know if you noticed, but the quality of the videos got better. Stephen got better at reading from a teleprompter, but we only ever saw him seven times. Um, I think it's seven or eight times on these videos, and this is all of them. We never ever saw him with anybody or at any function, nothing, never ever. Uh, it's just ridiculous. So typical paid actor and living theoretically in Thailand, I don't even know how we know that, but I have... I would still pay somebody $100 if I could find the real Stephen Reese Lewis. And we hope that you will enjoy the new initiatives that we have come up with. Most of you are only focusing on Hyperdrive memberships, especially with the new four times promo that we have added. It's a real bonus. <laughs> However, you'll be doing yourself a disservice if you do not check out the other products on our platform. I would like to congratulate the following links. Bitcoin Beauty. So Bitcoin Beauty just won a million HUT. Uh, no, she, what would she win? Yeah, a million HUT. I think I got that right. King BTC, RL Media, and Elo Him Spend Thrift Trust. These winners will be able to receive attractive rewards amounting to more than a million USDT. Now there's um, the Satoshi Show. I finally got it right. There's three guys called Marcus. Roy and um, Troy, Marcus and David. Now Troy won, I think, two hundred thousand dollars when Hypernation came out. But Hypernation said that he won the two hundred, but only if he produced a promotional video um, would they pay it. So he wouldn't do a promotional video about Hypernation. So he never got the money. Now. Roman, I talked about earlier on, did a video about how wonderful Hyperverse was. Brenda Chunder also did one. And the other people that won the money in this giveaway also did a promotional video. So now it's all very obvious that they were told that they had to do a promotional video saying thank you. Otherwise, they wouldn't have received the money, which is just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, what you know now and what you saw happening then was trying hard to figure out why people were doing what they did. And I hope this would inspire the rest of you to do your best in the future campaigns that we organise. Poor guy didn't have his mic on, did he? Continue to shoot for the stars. Alrighty, so we did a reverse lookup image search for him. Couldn't find him anywhere. Did find some similarities in people, but nothing. So, yes, help me find him. He's a paid actor. Okay, so I have to turn the sound down on this one um, because um, what I wanted to show you this, I think this was either a hyper fund commercial or something to show you where this company was going. And we'll find out in a minute. But when I looked through this video, I found these clips were all, um, you know, from video stores. So they w wasn't like they hired a production company to put this video together. It, uh, Hyper Fund. Yeah, so that was the original promotional video of Hyper Fund, which is pretty cool. So remember Hyper Capital, then it turned into Hyper Fund, and that's where it started to get traction, and then they rebranded it to Hyperverse. Um, around uh, turn the sound off. No. No hassle, no fuss, and just sign up. And they obviously pushed... Um, you know, Ryan Zhu as being a successful guru who's now in hiding, living in a small dinky apartment, trying to hide from the rest of the world so he doesn't get arrested, no doubt. I hope that gives you some insight um, about this company. And I probably can't stress enough. Hyper fun I'll just uh, wait till this finishes. But that there, yeah, I've seen that multiple times. Uh, these clips now, I look back. Opportunity. Uh, still, we'll miss out on the opportunity. Hyperfund. 
Uh, come on, come on, come on. There it is. And I think that's it. It is. So good stuff. Uh, so just to reiterate, Sam Lee is trying to start up Hyperverse again. He's going to do an announcement in a couple of three days. So I thought I'd crack out another video. Um, this video, this um, picture in the background isn't his uh, and Dan's Digitals. Uh, if you go to my last video before this one, you'll see that in the description I've linked back to their YouTube channel. Fantastic company. Um, subscribe to their YouTube channel so they get something out of it at least. Coming soon. Um, quite amazing. But one thing I did want to show you is the white paper. Um, I'll just get rid of that sound. Uh, where's my... How do I do that, Danny? Oh my, I've got so many keys going on here. I'll get rid of that. Right, so what I want to do is I want to show you the white paper that Sam Lee thinks is still the vision that everyone has. And just some of the things that I, I, I noticed when I was looking through this quickly. Um, so the, the white paper idea is you're going to have NFTs. Now, I've had a little bit of experience about buying NFTs. I bought some comics. They're now worth nothing. Uh, they're talking about building a metaverse, which is a place where you can have 3D buildings and people can go in there and stake out the real estate. And that was the idea that when the metaverse is released, you can literally um, buy real estate and sell real estate. So you get in there quick, buy the real estate. Um, ridiculous. And obviously de decentralized. I've forgotten what that all means. Uh, the metaverse each, um, what was the other one? Create avatars so you can have your own personality. Reside in the hyperverse so you can live there. Um, you can make tokens. There was something here. Galax, uh, oh, booster. No, there's something in here that was really funny, I thought. Manufacturing and mining so you can mine your own tokens. Uh, land and planet development. Uh, where's the funny one I saw? Oh, looting. That's it. Looting the original NFT. So, like other NFTs, like, oh, look, I'm just going to bitch, uh, bitch, even bitch that. Um, so, if you want to go to the website, read the white paper, and um, there was just a real funny statement in here. But this is the vision that everyone shared originally, which they never talk about. Uh, and it's a very long uh, white paper. Just for a, a, a parallel, Bitcoin's white paper is nine pages. This one is 21 pages. Bitcoin's the biggest um, coin there is. Hey, look, any information you can give me, go to dehec.com and please submit the form. Send it to me anonymously. Um, check out... Um, Go to Project Frugal, all one word. So go to youtube.com forward slash Project Frugal and go to this playlist called Hyperverse and you can go through here and everything I've just talked about. If you really are thinking about investing in Sam Lee and you're thinking, is this a scam or not? I get emails all day long from people saying, so thank you for the video, Danny. It really helped me make a decision that this was a scam. A friend of mine was trying to introduce me into it and he was really pushy, just like I showed you that lady was. Go have a look at this and also please do subscribe to Vinny's channel because he put a lot of effort into it. Uh, Vinny was so kind, he actually gave me the... If you do a search on Google for Hypertech Group's historical timeline, it goes back from 2014 to 2022. You can see the whole country, uh, sorry, the whole um, the whole history of where Sam Lee, when Kalpish left, a summary, um, you know, we can talk about, you know, what they call Bitcoin Rodney, about how he left and what he was doing. So the whole timeline of everything that happened, which is really cool. Uh, obviously search and there's my youtube channel um one other thing i want to do i just did this cracking video that's going really well at the moment it's called hyperverse redemption plan and this is the one that sam lee's actually talking about hello everyone hello. i'm danny de heck <laughs> all right i'm just re doing a reenactment there i just wanted to show you this is the video a typical video i do is what i call long form videos and people go why don't you do short more precise videos but i do long form content so if you come along here and you see my description, um, you can click more and then you'll get chapters and timestamps and everything, all the important parts that you want to jump to, you can click on those or you can go right to the bottom and you can see chapters along the bottom. And then at the end of that, you've got view all. And if you're on a web page, then you can literally, so let's say I want to show you Sam's passport. Uh, so I can literally click on that 
and it will take you straight to the part where Sam shows us his passport. I don't know why Sam passed out his passport. And then we've got, if I wanted to say to you, look, go to the part where, um, sorry, go to the part where Sam is laying on the floor and I'm trying to give him some tips on how to win the community over. You can see, well, you can't really see it there, but um, there's Sam laying on the floor, which is just ridiculous. But anyway, I just wanted to show you how to navigate around a little bit. So I'm Danny DeHeck, aka the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger. Yes, I would love you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really does make a huge difference. Even hitting the thumbs up, it helps get these videos out. When Hyperverse was going gangbusters, I would produce a video and it would go between 2,000 to 5,000 views. Then they went after me and tried to get my videos removed and I just they just about did get my YouTube channel struck off, but they didn't succeed. But at that time, I had to remove a lot of content really quickly and I lost a lot of my momentum. So don't judge me by my 500 or 1,000 view videos, but what made my YouTube channel go off at the time was simply people who support what I do, clicking that thumbs up button, hitting um, subscribe, hitting the bell to be notified when new videos come out. And also, if you provide a comment, I promise I will personally reply to you. I make it my personal, I'm often up at three or four o'clock in the morning. At the moment, it's 10 to 11 at night on a Saturday night, but I wanted to get this video out because I know that Sam Lee is about to try to relaunch something that has changed a lot of people's lives. I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. I used to be part of an organization um, that used to control people and the elders and the ministerial servants and the circuit overseers and the conventions, they used to preach to us and we believed everything they said. Yeah, unfortunately, I've had two people in my family commit suicide or take them. I don't like the word commit suicide. I tell you, it's a bit of a thing. If you have no people who people have taken their own lives, it's a nice way of saying it. Instead of saying committed suicide, saying People died by suicide because it is a way that people die. They may have taken their own life, but saying to, the words, when they come out of people's mouths and they say died by suicide, it just seems a lot nicer than committing suicide. Just say it. I try to say it and I get it wrong every now and again. But that was because of the pressures that the organization put on my stepdad and my sister. And now, I was talking in a Telegram group today and I was telling them, they were saying, oh, you know, these multi-level marketers could be responsible for people dying by suicide. And, and I have to say, yes, they are. I had one organization contact me about one big Ponzi scheme and they had tracked 11 people that had died by suicide um, because they lost their wealth. Now, unfortunately, what happens is um, we're, we were isolated over covid we were befriending people over the internet using Zoom, and these scammers have got in there and used Zoom to manipulate people into parting with their money. And crypto isn't really the problem, but crypto does make it a lot easier for money to be moved around the internet internationally. So I do believe that these guys have got more than just taking people's money. I believe that people have actually probably um, taken, died by suicide, you know, I should say that, and I just think that's disgusting, so because of my upbringing as an ex-Jehovah's Witness, I got kicked out when I was 23, I'm 53 years of age now, I don't really care what these scammers try to do to me, so I've literally had, as I said, somebody try to sue me for $3.8 million for defamation in the New Zealand High Court, to my surprise, I got all the paperwork, local lawyer, and they are from America, I live in New Zealand, these guys have the money, and they don't like these videos, but why do I do it? I do it because I want to name and shame anyone running a Ponzi scheme or a scam. And it's really important. I need your help. Now don't sit there passively looking at my videos going, oh yeah, everyone else will do the work. Just click the thumbs up, hit my bell, and be notified when new videos come out. And I really do value your comments. So those four things make a huge difference. I think that was four. Anyway, next video, I were thinking about doing the presentation video that uh, Mike, what's his name? Uh, Mike, 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 uh, Mick, Mick Cathy, here he is. Mick Mulcahy. I'm just going to read out, these are all the, the key people, and you can listen to these names, and let's, let's, let's read them out. Keith Williams, Brenda Chunga, Bitcoin Rodney, 
Rodney Burton, Ryan Shu, Sam Lee, Jaden Way, Ron Ajal, Chris Hector, Gregorich Richters, Roman Lee Thoiser, Stephen Rees Lewis, Goran Hemstrom, Tammy Jackson, Mick Mulcahy, Amanda Lee, Sheila Morris, Avon Henry, Susan Lawrence, Valerie Graham, Binaki Naik, Jackie Holness, Vivian O'Callaghan, Des Amy, Oli Triu, Clive Bond, Whitney Smart, Sharon James, Dizzy Taylor, Tracy Cassavy, Clayton Ford, Valeria Campbell, Avon Henry, well, you might think that's a lot of names, but if you look at the background picture, those people along the bottom, we just read out half of them, if not even not even half of them. So these guys are rampant, and they're out there promoting these multi-level marketings. They're not naive. They know exactly what they're doing. They will look you in the eye, just like I am now, and tell you that this is an opportunity of a lifetime. And if you don't invest quickly and take advantage of some discount sale they're having, you will lose out. And you will not have the lovely lifestyle that they have. Every one of these multi-level marketers, except for the few ones like Kalpesh Patel, he's the only one I can see having a good lifestyle. Um, other guys like Jan Gregory, um, uh, they had one that just fell over cash uh, bull market. And um, they offered $500 USDT if people signed up for their platform. And I was in this Telegram group and it went from 50, I was, I was 40 in the Telegram group. And then they did this, get $500 if you sign up for an account. 10,000 people within 48 hours joined the Telegram group. They were all signing up like there was no tomorrow. And then what happened is once people signed up, they changed the rules and they said, oh, you need to sell $5,000 worth of memberships and then we'll pay out the 500. So basically they were saying they were offering 10% um, reward for people that would refer it to their friends or family. Just, just don't, don't fall in trap with that sort of stuff because if your friends or your family member are trying to exploit money out of you because they really care about your future get yourself some new family members and get yourself some new friends i know that might sound a bit critical but coming from someone who's lost their family my family anyone that's involved in my family in the jehovah's witness organization has nothing to do with me my 79 year old mother she could be 80 now doesn't talk to me on a wednesday morning when i'm driving to work she's at the bus station with one of the carts with the watch chair and awake magazines and she's given them out to people and she and strangers that she doesn't even know but she won't even talk to her own son so i can live life without having my family in it make sure your family ain't greedy and trying to get your money because i've ha had so many sad stories all right i'm starting to rave on a little bit thank you for watching the video and um, i look forward to seeing you watch my next video have a great night evening or morning. See ya.